All right, it's Bueller and Dodge. Welcome to Split Decision. And uh, on the phone today, we have a very special guest coming off her blood splattering fight of the night, award winning bout at UFC Fight Night 83, Kelly Fazzles. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you for having me on the show. Of course. Tell us about the, the, the process or experience you had here. You were 3 and 0 in MMA. You fought two months prior to getting a phone call from the UFC. Mm-hmm. They say, we want you to go to Pittsburgh uh, and fight former Invicta champion Sarah Morales at Fight Night 83. What, was there any hesitation? Like, what were you doing at the time? Uh, yeah, the, I had, you know, taken my pro debut at the end of 2013, and then I took a year off. And then I came back for the two title fights in Colorado. And we were looking, actually, in December, we were looking at um, a fight for Legacy for the title that Holly mm. Holmes vacated when she went to the UFC. So I was going to try to prepare for that because I knew I was supposed to fight Valentina and uh, Shashanknov. I know I probably butchered that last name, <laughs> but uh, Valentina and Shish- So uh, I was supposed to fight her, and Dana White was supposed to be there looking at her because they were thinking about bringing her into the UFC. And then, um, so I was looking at that in December, trying to get that confirmed, and that fell through because um, Sarah Kaufman's opponent. Uh, pulled out due to an injury like eight days before the fight. So Valentina jumped on that opportunity. So that kind of fell through, and that uh, that kind of, for a moment, took the wind out of my sails. Uh, and I just kind of went back to focusing on work. And then we had something lined up with uh, GKO, Global Knockout, mm. um, and at the end of March. And so I was just getting ready to start my fight camp. I'd just been working, trying to um, get – a lot of shift work done and trades. And so I just finished working like an 80 hour work week oh, due to geez. the shift trades and uh, overtime and stuff like that. And I got the call from a manager saying, Hey, do you want to fight in nine days at 135?" And I was like, I'm 155 right now. So probably <laughs> not. And then he's like, it's for the UFC. So I was like, let's do it. So <laughs> we'll, we'll just make it happen. I don't know how, but we'll make it happen. Obviously, so, if you're preparing for a December fight, then you're not in a fight camp this early. But then you were looking yeah. at another fight, so you were thinking about getting into a fight camp. So were you literally not in a fight camp at all when you got the phone call? No, I was training and just trying to, to manage training on top of work. Um, like I said, I was trying to get, like, uh, you know, shift trades worked out so that, you know, later when I needed a shift off during closer to my fight in March, then, you know, I could work those in. Mm. But um, So I was kind of focused on work and getting caught up, and then I was going to start my fight camp. Um, and I, I was just approaching the six, week, uh, six weeks out So um, when I got that call. So I hadn't really started yet, but I had been training, you know, after work and on my days off and stuff like that. So, But I was nowhere near fight shape. So, And I was also 20 pounds over. That was right. probably the thing That's that worried me the most. I was like, you know what? Um, the skill that I have right now, I'm not going to learn anything new in nine days. So I just got to go off what I know. But it was the, the 20 pounds that like um, kind of made me hesitate a little bit, but not for long. So the fight was confirmed. on. We confirmed that I was doing it on Sunday. And then Monday was paperwork. Tuesday, they flew me out to Las Vegas to get the pre-medicals done, the pre-fight <laughs> medicals done. Wednesday, they flew me out to Pittsburgh, signed more papers, sold out more paperwork. And then Thursday was when I could really focus on the weight cut. And I was trying to cut weight during this time. I just, you know, I, got, I had help with uh, from uh, Eric Trigelli. Wow. So he helped me come up with a plan of what to eat and to water load and stuff like that at the beginning of the week. And so I was doing that. So it was super stressful at first. But I think that actually helped because I didn't even really have time to get nervous about the fight. I just, just it was just like rushing in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, Thursday I cut weight, Friday. Friday night I, I stopped drinking water, stopped eating. I cut a little bit that night. Um, I had help from George Lockhart with um, the final weight cut process and then the rehydration process after. Uh, I believe Saturday morning I woke up um, just eight pounds over, so I cut eight pounds of water. Oh God. And then weighed in Saturday, fought on Sunday. So it was just like, and then flew home Monday. It was just crazy. <laughs> Uh, a whirlwind of an experience, but it was it was surreal. It was awesome at the so same time. So. You literally had no time to prepare for this fight. <laughs> yeah. None whatsoever. It was pretty much just what I knew, yeah. Just and going so, there with what I already know and 
you know. So you go in there with challenge. you go in there with no fight camp. You you accept the fight on nine days notice, and at least from what I'm understanding, at least five of those nine days were spent doing stuff for the UFC, like filling out paperwork and things of that nature. And you had to cut twenty pounds in nine days. Yet you still managed to get fight of the night. How does that feel? That definitely helped with the sting of the loss, you know. <laughs> uh, so. Um, you able to take the time off of work now? I mean, an extra bonus, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pay off some of those, you know, student loans and some of those loans and stuff. So, um, yeah, it was it, it was awesome because if, if you have to lose a fight, knowing that your fight was so entertaining and it was just such a good battle, that's the kind of fight you want to have, you know, as a fighter. So that, that kind of made me proud that, um, that my fight – was like that, but I, you know, I wish I could have come out with that win. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> you, you definitely set the tone early in that fight, though. Definitely winning round one, you, you definitely outstruck her in the first round, um, and mm-hmm. you took you took the fight to her. And round two was very, very tough and hard fought. You know, unfortunately, did end up in, in round three. You know, being defeated. But again, tell us about that whole process in there. What What are you thinking in there during this fight? Um, yeah, the first round, I, I remember exchanging some some powerful trades with her, and. Lauren Murphy is so tough. So, you know, there are a couple of times where I was like, dang, you know, like she just keeps coming. So um, that is one tough girl. Uh, but, yeah, the first round, um, going into the fight, we wanted to pace myself because I didn't know how that – I never cut weight like that before that fast. So <laughs> I didn't know how yourself. that – yeah, I didn't know how that was going to affect my energy. Um, I wasn't, you know, in tip-top fight shape, you know. I'd been training, but I wasn't like um, I wasn't sure how soon I would gas if I really just pushed it from the first round, you know. So a lot of it was just kind of um, trying to control the pace uh, and stay standing because wrestling will just take it out of you, especially if you if you miss or struggle on the takedown. So it was just to kind of control the pace of the fight the first round, and she got my she got my nose bleeding in the first round. Um, I think it was, it, you know, it had cracked in the first round, um, but definitely the second is when it was broken. Oh, and uh, toward the end of the second round, and, and it's fine. I've broken my nose before, and you know, it wasn't too bad. But um, during at the end of the second round, she kept hitting the same spot. So I was like, oh man, I could feel like the structure breaking. Oh. And uh, and I knew something more than just the nose was was going on. But you know, I was just trying to be like, hey, protect yourself. She did a good job about finding it and, yeah. you know, continuing to, to hit there. So I think that took it out of me in the third round. Um, going into the third round, I actually – I don't remember a lot about the third round. <laughs> so, and I, I haven't watched it because I'm – right now I just – I had surgery, so I can't train right now. So I'm going to watch it closer to when I can train. Otherwise, I'll just sit around and I'll let it eat me up yeah. as far as what I could have done different and stuff like that. I can't just – sit around and think about it but um i think just i gasped in the third and um and the what was going on with my nose and my eye it was unable it was to breathe me. <laughs> right i was able to breathe i just remember getting get, whenever she hit there tasting metal oh. so you know it's just i knew something was off so i was more on a defensive mode in the third round i, I think i'm not sure exactly how it got to the ground um <laughs> And, you know, I know there's definitely things. I, I know I, I wasn't doing what I would normally have done if I had been, you know, not so um, defensive about my face. So, um, but, yeah, she she really brought it. And I could tell, you know, every time she came in for the next round, she was doing something different. So whatever, you know, her corners, her strategy was, you know, changing a little bit each round. So, so, uh, it was it was just a fun fight, though. It's safe to um, say that obviously, it, you know, if we get to see you again, then you were, hopefully we're going to see you with a full camp and with the proper weight cut yeah. and with being able to watch tape on your opponent and come up with a game plan. So would you would you say that the next time that we see you, it's going to be a completely different fighter? Um, yeah, I mean, you'll see the same just bringing it every round, but I think I'll have more gas and <laughs> um, I'll have a you know a, a better strategy for sure. Um, I'll just I'll just feel more fight ready, and you know, hopefully be able to push the pace more. Um, a lot of it was just the 
the cardio, and then coming up with a plan, you know? And, and well, you, it's something that Dana White has, has said that he, he loves fighters that will take a fight on last minute notice and are, are there to fight. And obviously you getting fight of the night shows, A, that you're willing to take a fight on late notice and also give it everything you have if you got fight of the night. So with that being said, yeah. have you heard anything back from the UFC? Yeah, I will, I will be given in, um, some more fights for sure. Awesome. So I'm on, I'm on medical suspension right now, but when I get off of that, um, we'll look to schedule on something hopefully, else. Hopefully they fixed your profile too so it doesn't say you're 11 feet tall anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like 11 feet tall and 69 pounds or something like that. I, was like, <laughs> Man, I am a huge, tiny person at the same time. <laughs> so. We definitely gained a huge following in this fight. I know Twitter was on fire. A lot of fight personalities, a lot of fans, a lot of other fighters were following you. I mean, what, what, what surprised you the most? Did anybody reach out to you that uh, was exciting for you? Yeah, I think that was also what helped the sting of the loss, too, was I saw all that support, and it just kind of blew me away. So I felt I felt very um, uh, appreciated as a, as a fighter for the fight that we brought, and um, I felt uh, that people respected our fight, and I don't, I don't know, just all that support, it was overwhelming and very, you know, lifting me up. So, yeah, that was, I, that was surprising to me because I wasn't expecting that. So what did you so, think about the uh, the Nate Diaz fight over the past weekend? That was an awesome fight. <laughs> <laughs> that that was just yeah. I, I've I've watched it twice, so it's um, yeah. I, I loved that fight. I love the Diaz brothers. I love the way that they bring the fight every time. So um, honestly, I didn't know how it was going to go. I was hoping Nate Diaz would win, but you know, Conor McGregor, he's an awesome fighter too. So I I love both those guys. So. Um, it was a it was an awesome fight to watch though because you just didn't know what was going to happen. Well, you know we're we're two oh nine over here, and you're Northern California, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I have it on my paper here to see if you can give us a a, a Nate or Nick Diaz impression. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know if I can do that. <laughs> I can't even do a British accent, you know. Like I'm terrible at those impressions. Yeah, hearing, um, hearing a Nate or Nick Diaz impression with a British accent would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think of anything. My mind is drawing a complete blank. Of, so uh, I can't even think. It's all right. It's, it's all right. <laughs> it's worth a try. It's worth a try. Well, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll definitely be keeping a lookout for when you get your next fight in the UFC. We'll, we'll uh, do our best to be in touch. Uh, of course, want to wish you a quick healing process and quickly to get back to training. Got one more question for you before we jump off the interview. It's a, it's a question that we ask all the fighters. It's a who would win in a fight question. Dodge, go ahead, man. All right, who is going to win in a fight? A bear with machine guns for paws or a pterodactyl that pooped chainsaws? Okay, a bear with machine guns instead of paws. Yes. Or what was the second one? A pterodactyl that poops chainsaws. Oh, poops chainsaws. Um, dude, the bear with machine guns, man. <laughs> Team bear. Team bear. Yeah, yeah. Well, we keep a we keep a running tally on this too. So you're going on the board as Team Bear for sure. Yeah, Team Bear. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, uh, Kelly Fazels, everybody, and she will be back in the octagon very, very soon. Kelly, thank you for your time today. We really appreciate it. All right, thank you.